Hello everybody. In today's video, I would like to show you the plug and play functionality when you have a Cisco Catalyst Center. If you are not familiar with the plug and play, this is the easy way to onboard the switches, wireless controller, routers, access point. It's a, a way to automate the process for devices you might not have access to apply some configuration. So for example, imagine you have, you have a new device, you don't have any configuration. So someone is going to rack and install and power on and connect the uplink. You won't get additional support. You won't be able to console uh, that specific switch. You need a way to discover that device. Uh, you can use a uh, PNP before. The only way to really test this is if you have a, a physical device, right? A physical switch, router, access point, wireless controller. But now with the uh, uh, Catalyst uh, Nike, k the virtual one, I was able to test the process. And this it's, is great because you can test your template before you apply it to the physical device, right? So you can identify some commands that are not applying well, or when using PMP, a Cisco Catalyst Center will enable AAA. But you need to double check that you cannot use login local on the BTY, right? But probably in your standard template, you use in that way. With that, my point is that you can test this in advance, especially your template and identify some issues in advance. My Fusion router will provide connectivity to this switch. This switch should communicate with the enterprise IP that is configured in Catalyst Center. This is a trunk port. I'm going to use the VLAN one. I already have an SBI here. Let me show you my Fusion switch. Should run an interface VLAN one. Uh, my VLAN one, I have the 192 segment. I have my uh, DHCP relay that is pointing to my Windows server. Basically, the new switch is going to request an IP, and then the DHCP will provide enough information to this switch so the switch can communicate with the uh, enterprise IP. It's a trunk port, interface trunk. This is the port I'm using, this one here. Let's go to the Catalyst Center. Go to Provision, Plug and Play. In this version, you will see that you have all the steps required for this process. You just need to follow these steps to uh, use PMP. So I will use the Add Device, Single Device. You have the option also to synchronize with your smart account. If you have our RMA, Cisco might put everything in your smart account and you don't really need to do anything else. But in this case, uh, we're going we're gonna to do it manually. So we need the serial number of the switch, the virtual switch that we're going to use. Uh, let me see if I can find that information. I don't remember where. This is the serial number and product ID. Uh, this is the Catalyst virtual device and the name is going to be border node because I, I would like to add another border node to my deployment. You add the device. So you have uh, the basic information for this device, the serial number, the product ID, but you don't have any IP. Uh, Catalyst Center can't claim this device because there is no IP, there is no reachability. So that's the reason why uh, the switch is going to request an IP and then communicate with the Catalyst Center. Let's start this device. I'm wondering if I have the right serial number. This is going to take some time. You don't have console access. You won't see anything, right? You can ping that IP from the DNA center, right? Then you will be able to claim the, the switch.
Okay, so here, as you can see, we don't, you can see the serial number here. If you are testing, you don't need to press yes or no here, right? If you don't have access basically to this device, so you won't be able to do it. You need to wait for the switch to get an IP and then you will see DNA center will update this information with an IP and you should be able to ping the device. As you can see here, it's starting doing the DHCP request, VLAN 1. Let's see if we got something here. Fusion. I see the debug. DHCP. Server. Packets. Now we can see the request coming from this new device. You can see the switch got an IP and here the request coming from this new switch and you see that it's a start the PMP process. So let me refresh this. Okay. Now you can see I have the IP. We can claim this device before that. Let me show you the template. I have a new template in PNP. The host name is something you define. Those are the variable, the loopback IP, the uh, next hub IP, and the subnet mask, basic configuration to SSH license, the MTU, and I put it as a trunk. This is the basic configuration to reach this device. You might need a different one, or you might use for other purposes. You might put the ISIS here if you want. So. What I'm going to do here is claim the switch. I'm going to sign to one of my sites in Miami, which is Brico. Then I have the PNP template, which is the one that I showed you for switches. Then here is where you need to define those variables mentioned before 108. Let me check this OIP. Interface brief and assign it. So in this case, I'm using this VLAN for uh, network connectivity. The next hub for the default route be the SBI IP address 117 and the subnet mask. Let me check the show. Interface VLAN 101. Yeah, press next. Here you have the summary, preview the configuration. This is what is going to push DNA center, the username, an MP, all that. This is the device details. I cannot do it with this virtual device, but if you have a golden image, it's going to upgrade the switch. And then it's going to apply the template. It's going to do everything in one shot. You don't need to later upgrade the switches. It's going to do, it's going to do it automatically. So here you can see the CLI preview. Here's where you can identify if there are some kind of issues here. And okay, close this and claim the device. Let's see what happened. We need to see the onboarding process and provision. If you got an error, troubleshoot this. We are seeing the loopback crypto key SVI. You check the state here, it's in the onboarding process. Point here is that DNA or the catalyst center needs to have reachability to this device, right? Because part of the template is disable VLAN 1 and use uh, SBI 101 for network reachability. So you can see this change to down and now is 101 and now it's up. Let's see if this change, this IP address is still the old one. We need to wait. If Let's see if we can ping this device from DNA Center. The IP for this 
switch. I don't remember. Okay, let's say. Show run interface VLAN 101. Okay, so basically this IP, it's already here. Let's see if I can ping it from DNA Center. Okay, I'm still not able to ping that one. Let's see. Show IP interface brief. Let's go and sign it. 101. Let's see if we have the static routes. 64 0, Still not able to reach that one. But if you see here, DNA center logging. Let me check why. One eighty two dot one dot two fifty five dot one oh five. I need to source from the loop back. I have network connectivity. My bad. We need to use the loop back, right? This is the temporary IP that I use for that connectivity between the fusion and the new switch, but I need to use the loopback, which is the one that DNA center will use for a uh, network connectivity. Okay. So now it's working. If you, you see here is provision. So let's go to my inventory here and you will see this device is reachable. I need to wait for this to complete the sync and then I will be able to provision the device. Now you can see here that the border node is reachable, managed, and I can start my provisioning portion, right? Without really need to pre-configure anything in advance. So that's what I have. Thanks for watching.